gives me enormous pleasure to welcome you all to the Harbobin Khurana Birth Centenary Symposium. Uh, a special welcome to all the associates of Khurana, uh, many of whom are participating in this event. Khurana, as we would uh, hear more about from the three speakers today, was a legendary uh, scientist who has had a huge influence on the science, the scientists worldwide. Starting with a very humble beginning, go reach the heights that are attained only rarely. To me, his words, my quote, I have met people who believe they knew at a very young age what they wanted to do in their lives. I envied them, but my own life was not like that, unquote. Have been the most inspiring words. Bobin was a true example of how the highest level of scientific achievements uh, can go hand in hand with personal modesty. His ways of doing science and thinking of complex problems at the interface of biology and chemistry have been the most inspiring and something that will continue to keep the memories of Govind alive. Today, uh, we are remembering Govind in the centenary year of his birth uh, by organizing the symposium. I'm very much indebted to the speakers and chairs for so readily accepting my invitation. All the three speakers are extremely well recognized in their fields and are legend uh, on their own. Uh, so we are really fortunate to have them speak in the symposium. Uh, events like this are important to enthuse uh, young mm -hmm. scientists worldwide and more so in India, as they can easily relate uh, to the fact that highest kind of science can be done even with not so advanced facilities. Uh, provided the problems are chosen carefully and chosen uh, to be futuristic as done by Khurana. I hope this symposium will inspire these students to take a leap uh, from scientific journey of Govind Khurana. Uh, uh, with these few words, it is uh, now my pleasure to invite uh, Professor <laughs> Pavel Chakravarti, formerly Professor and Chair, Department of Chemistry and Acting Director, Bose Institute, Kolkata, who, has, who, who had the privilege uh, of working with Govind. May I request Parul to say a few words about Govind and introduce Tom uh, Rajmandari, a longtime colleague and friend of Govind. Greetings to all of you. Already you have been introduced to the theme of the program, celebrating birth centenary of Govind. I start with a quote from Sidney Hook, who said, quote, everyone who remembers his own education, remembers his teachers, not methods, techniques, the teacher, is the heart of educational system, unquote. So is Govind to his fraternity. My heartfelt homage to Govind, my mentor at MIT. Perhaps I was the first Indian woman to do research with Govind. Well, Govind's journey, an extraordinary journey from a gusty village of Raipur in Multan, the then British India, now in Pakistan, Traversing Asia, England, Switzerland, Canada, ultimately USA. He was born in Raipur on January 9, 1922. No birth record, but Govin said it may be true. Youngest son of a Patuwari, a village agricultural taxation clerk in British India. Govin said, I quote, Although poor, my father was dedicated to educating his children. We are practically the only literate family in the village, inhabited by about 100 people, mostly homeschooled under the tutelage of his father and his elder siblings. Then he went to the government college in Lahore and Punjab University. He got his BSc in 1943. MSc in 1945. And then he went to the University of Liverpool, England, did his PhD, and his mentor was uh, Roger Beer. He did his postdoctoral studies with Balladme Prelog at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. In 1949, he came back to India to find a job, but there was none. Then Govind again went back to Cambridge. He stayed then for Two, two years, 1950 to 52, and did postdoctoral studies with um, Wallace Kenner and Alexander Todd on peptide and nucleotide. 
Then Govind moved to University of British Columbia. He stood there from 1950 to 60 with a faculty position and worked on nucleic acid and synthesis of many important biochemicals. I quote Govind. He said, I did there with all the freedom in the world, unquote. Then he moved to University of Wisconsin and stayed there 1960 to 70 as the co-director of the Annal Research Institute. He moved to MIT in 1970 to, and stayed there after 2007 as Alfred Swan, professor of biology, chemistry, later a member of the board of scientific governors at the Scripps Research Institute there. He retired from MIT in 2007. Oh, he got many, many, many awards. Gobin, a founding father of chemical biology, utilized the power of chemical synthesis, how the language of DNA and RNA is transformed into proteins in the cell, and deciphering the <coughs> genetic code, how the triplet sequences and code specific amino acids. For deciphering the genetic code, Gobin shared Nobel Prize in medicine in 1968 in medicine with Marshall Nidenberg. After the middle of 1970s, his lab studied the membrane biology and the biochemistry of bacteriodopsin, a membrane protein that converts light energy into chemical energy by create, creating a proton gradient. Later, this group went on to study the structurally related visual pigment known as odopsin. I was fortunate to be involved in the beginning of this program. Uh, Nobel Museum Stockholm in 2000, and I was so pleased to see the Govind's inscription with his picture. I first met Govind at MIT in 1973. I was in a Sari. Govind told me that, how could you work in Sari, Paru? I said, I cannot work, but if you wish, I can change to the uh, you know, other dress. Anyway, just a long story. Then I met uh, Govind, in, um, of course, many times before, but one uh, incident I remember in 1994 with my daughter in Kendall Square, the new complex is coming up at that time. Govind asked my daughter, would you like to join MIT for undergraduate studies? My daughter said, no, I would not join because I will go to either Harvard or Penn State where there is a big campus to enjoy campus life. That was an answer, bold answer to Govind. Govind laughed. And I met uh, Govind and Esther in Boston in 2000. Boston with Tom and his wife in Boston again with Marsha and others, maybe some of you didn't come with them. Then lastly, I met Govind in Okayama, Japan in a symposium in 2004. Uh, Takao Chekia was the host there and many of us were there. Yeah, here are the lifelong friends. Their friendship from 1962 to 2011 till Govind's demise, lifelong friends. While Govind was a scientist par excellence, um, told, which shared legacy in the Indian subcontinent. Striking personality, a passionate human being with one for all, including the family members of his band organ.